I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna take this vintage toy and make it real. This project is gonna be absolutely ridiculous. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that we have this kind of running gag about being a clamp champ. Anytime I clamp up a workpiece or something, we even have stickers and t-shirts for that if you wanna be a clamp champ as well. But there's another clamp champ. This is a He-Man figure, Masters of the Universe, and his name is Clamp Champ. This is a figure that not everybody knows about because it was pretty late in the original run of toys. In fact, I had never heard of it until I saw it on Instagram a couple of years ago, but now I decided to get one of these. And today, to celebrate the new Masters of the Universe show on Netflix, I decided to make his big ridiculous clamp. So he wears this thing on his arm, it's gigantic to his scale, but it has these big pincher pieces, and when you push a button, they clamp around something. Will Clamp Champ get a hold of him? So what I think would be really funny is to make a bigger, like, human version of this thing and actually make it strong enough to clamp something together. So, we're gonna try that. We'll see how it goes. Basically, my idea, so far, is to make a big contraption that has a piece that moves up and down, which will cause these two pieces to move back and forward, and hopefully, whatever it is that's causing that motion on the inside will be strong enough to actually force these together. I've started on a mock-up here on the table, so let's take a look. This is just gonna be one side of this, just as a, a test. I've got the piece that's gonna go forward and backward in a little temporary track here, and then there's a pivot point and then a slot, and I've worked on this a little bit so that that will move in that orientation. And the big thing, the important thing, is how far this piece is gonna move. So it has to be the maximum, like the closed position, and then the completely open position and the maximum amount of movement here is seven inches and that's because I have a piston that has a seven inch throw. This is the piston. This is a pneumatic rod or piston and it goes in and out based on air pressure. So you have an inlet and an outlet or two inlets, however you wanna look at it. And as you add pressure to this one or that one, it pulls this rod in and out. This is something I have never done before. I've never used pneumatics to make anything like this. So I've ordered some tubing, some connectors, and the big thing that's gonna actuate all this is a solenoid. And so you take the air and you go in one side and then it comes out two other ones. Those connect to these two things and as you add power to this, it will turn it on and off, which will send air to this or to that, which will bring the rod out or in. So I'm gonna get all this hooked up, get it hooked up to the compressor, and then give it a shot, make sure it works like I think. I legitimately have no idea if this is gonna work. I know nothing about these, so I don't know if this is gonna shoot out at like 100 miles an hour or if it's gonna be like We'll find out. So now the solenoid needs to have power going to it. You can buy these with all different voltages. I went ahead and got a 110 so I could just add a plug to it, plug it right into the wall, because this whole goofy arm assembly thing is gonna have an air hose running to it, so I figured may as well put a power hose to it as well and have less wiring to do. Power hose? Power, power hose. I mean, it's we, not, power. It's not wrong. We're gonna go with power hose, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Three tiny power hoses. Okay, we're gonna do a pressure test because I cannot find how much pressure you need to put into this thing. So we're gonna start at 50 PSI and move up. Okay, that's cool, that works. So let's up the pressure because that doesn't seem to be working very hard to do that. 70 pounds. Okay, 90 pounds. Gonna try with plug-in power. There you go. So, I found something <laughs> right here on the object itself. It says max pressure one MPA, and I looked that up and I converted that to 145 pounds per square inch. So, 
we should be able to set the compressor all the way up to 145 max and get a little bit more pressure out of this. So let's shoot for like 135. I think I have it working. So let's talk about exactly what it's doing. It's very, very simple. This is a solenoid, which is basically a relay. So power turns this on and off. And all that's doing is diverting air from here to there if it's on or there if it's off. And then those two hoses are going to the two ends. And so if this one gets air, I think it draws it back. If this one gets air, it pushes it out. So really this is just about adding power or taking away power from the solenoid, which means we need to add a switch right here so we don't have to plug it and unplug it to make it happen. So we're gonna add a simple 110 switch to this line. Then we can start figuring out how to get all of this and the big clamp things into some sort of giant arm box. So I think we have the piston working, the solenoid works, our mechanism for the pincher, at least one side of it works. So I'm gonna get a bigger board and start to actually lay out all these pieces and get them connected kind of in two dimensions, like working on something, and then we'll just start replacing parts to make the final versions. I think eventually I'm just gonna have to close the whole thing up in a big silly box that looks like this, but luckily we have plenty of room to work with, so we're just gonna start laying it out on the table. need to do is figure out a way to attach this to a piece that will move forward and backward that can then let these two parts pivot on it. I also have to fix this thing down to a surface and the mounting holes are on the ends. So that's kind of locked in. We'll have to lock it down with something as well. So we need to have a piece that can move back and forth. We can figure out how, what size threads those are. Check this out. These are called thread checkers and they just have a bunch of different male and female threads. And so you just take the thing that you're trying to figure out what it is and you just go through the motions. And that's one of my superpowers is being able to get it first time. So that is a M10 1.25. So I'm gonna take my super scientific, uh, precisely CAD modeled, just kidding. I'm gonna take this random thing that I just kind of threw together really quickly and replicate this on some other material to try to make like an actual pincher piece. And then probably when it's all said and done, I'll go back and make these look cooler and kind of match the toy a little bit better. But in the meantime, I just wanna have a single piece uh, and that I can duplicate and use on both sides just to make sure that this works. So I've got these pieces where they match up. They can pivot freely, even though the pivot points are just temporarily screwed on, so they're not even in line. That will all get fixed in a future version. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure that this thing will actually clamp on something. So right now it's closed, but I have to mimic my pivot point and my slot up here so that it can you know, move in that way because that's what it needs to do. And I also have to support these so that they're acting on the same plane and don't do like that. So we're gonna need some more spacers or some guide rails or something like that that are all gonna exist on the inside of this big enclosure.
130 PSI, terrifying, and it completely ripped the thing apart. But 30 PSI is a lot slower, and I think that will work a little bit better. But ultimately, we could put a regulator on it so we could actually dial in the PSI that's going to the whole thing if we need super clamp pressure or just a little bit or speed or whatever. So we'll work on that. But next up, I have to figure out how to recreate all these elements in the correct shape and get them stabilized so that they're not doing this. They all need to work on the same plane, otherwise the thing's gonna tear itself apart. So we're gonna work on that and then we'll put a top on it to help stabilize them on that plane. And then we can start dressing it up and making it look like the toy. Here's where we're at. Did some work, uh, some changing around of things. And I changed a few big things. One, I put some through bolts here, and these are hefty. They're coming through the bottom, so they're not gonna move. And once we get a top section on here, they will go through that as well. So those are gonna be good connection points. Uh, you can see that this one doesn't have a nut on it, and it's very loose, so we're gonna go with this kind. I also made this whole thing, which sandwiches the two pinchers between two pieces that connect to a plate that connect to this, so it won't come apart anymore. These are currently screwed together, but eventually all of this stuff is gonna have a nut and a bolt and washers putting everything together so it won't tear itself apart. But let me show you how it works right now. So part of the thing right now is getting them to line up correctly, and that's because this bolt is loose and they don't have a top surface on. So the next step is to actually just recreate all of this stuff with the correct materials, be more precise, make it look right, then we'll get it assembled together and then we can make it look like the toy. So now I've got these blocks back here so I can screw this whole thing together and kind of lock it into a single piece. Did some tests, I know that it works. So once I screw this together, then we're gonna do a bunch of foam smithing work on the top here just to make it look like the toy. I'm not gonna cover that real in depth right now, but we do have a bunch of videos about doing foam work. And you can always check out our friends, Bill and Britt over at Punished Props Academy if you wanna learn more. I've got a handle on the bottom of this so I can hold on to it, but I also need to keep it on my arm just to deal with the weight of it. So I'm gonna use this stuff. This is made for hanging pipes or air conditioning ducts or stuff like that. And it's a thin plastic, but I've used this a lot and I have used it in projects like this to make shields to make straps to go over your arm because you can easily screw it, unscrew it, move it if you need to make it bigger or smaller. It is really close. You see it? Oh man, yeah, that is close.
Big thank you to you, Clamp Champ, for the inspiration for this ridiculous thing. This was a ton of fun to make. It was fun just to make a big silly prop, but also to kind of like prototype a mechanical object, get it working in plywood, and then rebuild it to make it just a little bit more finished. It was a lot of fun to use. Plus, using a pneumatic piston like this is something I've never done before, and it gave me some ideas for some actual tools, some actual jigs, so you may see some pneumatics come up in a future video. If this gave you an idea for something silly, something functional, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. Also, if you've got any other ideas for things from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe that we could make, let me know down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Yes. Ah! Oh! Go!